Well, hello, CoinOps fans. This is Pixel Freak from the CoinOps Project Discord server. I now have my hands and I'm evaluating and telling you all about version three of Pi 4 Legends 2. This is the beta version. It's not quite released yet, but it looks like it's pretty close. I wanted to give you kind of a heads up to see what's happening. More cores, more themes, bug fixes, optimizations. The Legends builds, if you're familiar on the PC versions or even the, the new Pi versions, uh, these were simplistic but elegant, easy to use, easy to navigate, not a ton of settings type builds. You should be able to just have a friend or family come over, see this, want to play it, know how to do it. Grab the controller or the arcade controls, move around, start games, get out. That's how Legends uh, builds are meant to be as far as the UI, as well as artistically, they take all of the elements of the game, the side panel, the marquee, the control panel, everything put together, sometimes even just fan art, but also to include some of those instruction panels, which are so helpful to remember how some of these games are and still give you a flair for back in the day, arcade dwelling that we all used to do. So the Legends builds have now come to the pie, which is just a wonderful double whammy because one of the best things about this that BP has mentioned on the Discord server is that now you've got, it's basically like a console. You get a Pi or a Pi 400, you put this build on there and you have this inexpensive, noiseless console that just, it's a retro arcade machine. You turn it on, it boots up only to the Legends build, which is on Linux here and then running RetroArch. It is not MAME. There are MAME cores in here, but it's not like the PC builds that run on MAME primarily. This is all under RetroArch. It just simply shuts down. The device will shut down. A silent, small console-like device that's affordable next to your TV, easy for travel. It's not quite portable. I wouldn't use that word. That's, uh, you know, keeping your powder dry because the Steam Deck that's going to come out, uh, once we get a few more of those in the developer's hands, it sounds like that's going to be uh, quickly ported over and ready to go. And there's a lot of excitement about that. Different time, different video. With respect to the Pi and the Pi 400, I have a Pi 400 myself. Uh, I like it because it uh, has the higher clock, 1.8 versus 1.5. It's uh, silent because it has the built-in uh, heat sink in the keyboard the downside is it doesn't have a 3.5 millimeter audio jack and speaking of that version 2 and version 1 and version uh, version 3 will have it fixed but version 1 and version 2 of uh, legends 2 pi 4 has had a 3.5 millimeter audio issue where you couldn't enable it in raspy config uh, go ahead and go to the fact i posted a potential fix for that if you want to get your 3.5 millimeter jack working in version 2 or version 1 but version 3 should have that fixed in its uh, uh release otherwise folks use your x input controllers you can use d input arcade controls as long as you've wired them per the fact d input controllers are a little bit harder because you can't change the wiring on those RetroArch might like them. It might allow you to play the games, but in Retrophy itself, uh, you're probably going to, it's going to get a little funky. So unless you are just a wizard guru of configs and changing things in controls comp and or remapping everything in RetroArch, D input controls just really aren't uh, going to work that well on this build. But again, if you have the time and patience, I'm sure you can get it to work. General, uh, generic and zero delay arcade encoder boards, however, as long as you wire them, they work great out of the box. Because it's RetroArch and not the main PC build, you won't get that funky uh, swapping of coin and start on your controls like happens in the PC builds when you're using the uh, generic or zero delay controllers, which I have a pin for fixing on the CoinOps Discord too. It won't affect you because this is a retro arch build and the mappings uh, don't cause that to happen. Without further ado though, you've seen it, auto scrolling or what you also known as attract mode, rolling through these, look down at the bottom right, 500 games. As of right now, there's about 500 games. I want to let you know the retrofeed does count the four themes and the shutdown. So technically in this build, there's only 495, but themes, let's talk about themes. The legends theme is the default. Everybody's familiar with it. Uh, the 16 by nine full screen video snaps with the games going across the top. The great thing about being in the legends theme, which is the default, all of the options up here, all the snaps are full screen. It will show you what the theme looks like without actually having to go into the theme itself. So you can tell the marquee theme, which is included from version two up. You have your beautiful GJSM Smith cabinets on the left, the marquee scrolling in an up and down orientation on the right. Also, you see that uh, up and down, uh, I'm sorry, in the 
theme that we are in, the Legends theme, up and down will toggle between all games and favorites. Start button will toggle favorites on and off if you're not in the favorites playlist. If you're in the favorites playlist, it'll just kick them out of favorites because you've technically only toggled them off. Um, to get through the genres in the pie build, it's unlike PCs, you use the back button. Back button goes through all of the genres. And just to give you kind of a game count, because everybody's always asking, the 495 in all games, uh, the favorites is about 80 starting out. Last play is always the last 10 played. They're in alphabetic order, and they will be the last 10 played. So if you just played uh, Zookeeper, and then you go back and play 1942, you're going to see 1942 first and Zookeeper all the way down there, probably about the 10th because it's a Z. So it's alphabetical, but it just keeps the last 10 games played. Old School has 130 beat em ups, 66, Run and Gun 85, Fight Club 51, Shoot 'em ups 91, and Consoles, look at that, 78. And this is where the expansion of the course has really come in. But I'll do more of that probably in the wheel theme because I'll show you a neat little trick to see what you're looking at to probably be able to tell what system it came from. And furthermore, getting into RetroArch itself, clicking both thumbsticks, or if you have arcade controls, you don't have thumbsticks, Sticks, you would have to use the start button and F1 on your keyboard to get into the menus of RetroArch. Again, that's start button and F1. Otherwise, though, let's get back to the all games so that I can change over to the cabinet theme. Cabinet theme, uh, I'm going to show you what it looks like. It's probably the the most common fan favorite of the coin ops builds. You got the covers in the back right, behind the wheel on the right going up and down orientation and the wonderful cabinet art in the left with the snaps in the in the game cabinet itself. Wheel theme, it's kind of a hybrid of legends with the wheel on the right. It keeps the 16 by nine full screen HD videos and then the wheel up and down. Left and right in this mode would toggle between all games. And favorites, marquee theme, you have your beautiful cabinets on the left and then you have the marquees in the arcade wall there scrolling up and down and again left and right will toggle you between all games it doesn't do it because right now i'm still on the legends theme but let's go over to the cabinet theme because i want to show you the consoles and i love that it has the fantasy cabinets some of my favorite artwork in these builds by coin ops all of these cabinets that didn't exist before let's take a look at going into consoles hitting the back button to scroll through, get into consoles. Aladdin on Super Nintendo didn't have a cabinet, but GJSM Smith built these fantasy cabs and they are absolutely gorgeous. But look at the bezel. You see Nintendo there, you see the button layout, you know that that's a Super Nintendo game. You go here, oh, that's a Sega Genesis game. That's that version. Axel A, Batman Returns, Bonk's Revenge, which is a PC engine game, Border Down. It's in a Naomi cabinet, but it's on the Flycast core because it's a Dreamcast game. Look at that, Symphony of the Night. Sony, yeah, that's a PlayStation 1 game. New core added. Anyway, if you're always curious about what it is and you can't tell by those wonderful cabinets, start the game by pressing A. That will take you into RetroArch. Once you're in RetroArch, again, use those thumbsticks. It pulls up your menu. Look down at the bottom left, PCSX, rearmed core. This, you know, is a piece, uh, I'm sorry, a PlayStation 1 game. In here, since we're in the menu, you can move around. You can go into controls, A selects, B backs out. Both thumbsticks will get you out of there. And again, a reminder to those that are using arcade controls, that would be holding down your start button and F1 to get in and out. That would work as the toggle. So, as you can see, this one's starting up on the PlayStation 1. As always, back and select coin ops standard exit your game or emulator all right so i hit the uh left and right so it ended up knocking me back to all games and favorites hitting the back button getting back to consoles though take a look at what's in here and you'll see that crazy taxi dreamcast game all right there's a lot more added in here super nintendo doom even look at that running smoothly on a Pi 4. No overclocks. No overclocks needed. Even with the Pi 4, which overclocks very easily without extra cooling, and the default is 1.5 gigahertz as a core, you don't need it. It all runs smoothly because it's been optimized and tweaked to make sure that this build is the quality that you expect from coin ops. Look here. Game Boy Advance. Nintendo. Mario Kart 64. All of these are included here. I could go on and on, but folks, understand 
that this is a wonderful build. Get excited about it. It's going to be released soon. Legends 3 will be taking over and Retro Arcade 3 will be on the horizon. This will be the last version of the Legends 2 series. BP's already announced that on the Discord server. Go to your Discord so that you can go ahead and sign up, get all the support you need, help out others if you know what you're doing in this. There are no contributions, I guess, on there. It's the rule that if you want to help out, help out. It's a, a community where everybody enjoys retro gaming. Uh, thanks for spending the time with me so that I could review this wonderful build. I'm not a developer. I'm just here critiquing and explaining what's going on. Hope to see you on the Discord server. Thanks a lot.